welcome back to my channel for a Q&A that I'm very excited to do because it's specifically about what it's actually like to be a no-name working actor in Los Angeles. And I get questions all the time from like, what do actors actually make? What are auditions actually like? What is it actually like to be on set? How much do you get paid? Like all, all the different things. And so today we're gonna answer your questions about it completely honestly and transparently. As you know, I rarely ever hold back. I have nothing to hide. And today we're serving cozy vibes. I feel like being cozy. I am filming this on a holiday without realizing it's a holiday. So I deserve to be cozy. Lit a candle, got my matcha and have my 25 pound weighted blanket on. So let's get into answering your questions and I'll spill the tea. Not the kind of person to use that phrase, let's be honest. Okay, so I asked you guys on Instagram what you really would like to know. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, this is my handle. I oftentimes post over there asking for input or for specific questions when we do specific chatty videos like this. And I screenshotted a ton. So. A lot of these questions were recurring, like, can you audition without agents? And have you ever been recognized for things? How many auditions do you go on on average? I'm gonna try to answer the ones that were asked more than once because clearly that's the, what y'all want to know. And first, people wanna know if you have to have agents to audition and what agents I have, how that works. You absolutely do not have to have agents, though agents will submit you for higher quality work, higher paying work. You can do something called self-submitting in the acting world where there's different web websites and they post what they're looking for. So like say if they're looking for an 18 to 25 year old Caucasian brunette female, me, to play the girl next door type, me, then they will post that out there and I'll say, hey, I fit that description. And then I could submit. Um, they could say this is for a movie filming these three weeks, the pay is this much a day. And I'll say, okay, that seems worth it for me. I would submit my headshot and my resume. And then if they liked my look, just based off my headshot alone, they would either say, great, we wanna see a self tape or we want to bring you in for an audition. Now, I think I've seen agents oftentimes share how many submissions go in for each role and how many people they see per each audition. Typically for a role like a commercial, they will get four to five thousand submissions and then they will request auditions or self tapes for like, 20 to 70 actors per each role. So if you even get an audition, you <laughs> already made it through a really big hoop because so many people submit for each role. Now, I don't self-submit for anything anymore. I used to all the time. I would self-submit for anything and everything, no matter what the pay is. Now that I'm a working adult, I realize that going on auditions is taking away from my income because I'm self-employed and I need to make money. So because of that, I actually haven't self-submitted for a single thing in probably two years. I only go on auditions that my agents send me on. Now, agents. So I have multiple agencies that represent in multiple different fields of acting. So for example, I have a commercial agent who actually my commercial agency, I'm signed within multiple departments. So they will submit me for commercials. You know what commercials are for print, which would be like billboards or brochures or magazines or things like that, which I actually just booked a print job this week for a very, very big brand, which is very exciting. I don't do print as often. And I'm also signed within their voiceover department. So I have a whole team of agents at that one agency that submit me for all of those things. Also shout out to one of my favorite humans in the whole wide world, Julie, my commercial agent is probably watching this right now. I love her. Julie, I love you. So that is one agency. Then I have a theatrical agency. When people hear theatrical, they think theater, which is not the case at all. Theatrical is actually TV film. So that agency submits me for only TV and film type things. Then I have a hosting agency that submits me for things that I would be myself. So not that I'm playing a character, but that me as Mikkel Jancy would like taste made. I had my own cooking show that's hosting or if I ever had an HGTV show or even like the host of a game show. That's what hosting is. Even hosting like weird events where it's like, hello, welcome to this virtual event. My name's Mikkel and click on this to see blank. That's all hosting stuff. I have a agency that submits me for that. And then I have a manager. My manager is different from like a YouTube manager, which I should probably start looking into getting, but he oversees 
all of those teams and me as a brand. So for example, he will say, Mikkel, I think it would be awesome to try to get you an HGTV show. And he'll be like, how can we pitch you to HGTV? I'm gonna start thinking of concepts that would work. I'm gonna get with your hosting agent. I have this contact at HGTV. We're all gonna work together to try to make this work. Or like, for example, I did that commercial in Korea. My manager would help me figure out my travel and all of that type of thing. Just kind of the more detailed, overseeing me and overseeing my career in that industry. He's like my point contact. I'll text him if I am like, hey, I just got this audition from this agent, but the pay really sucks. What do you think I should do? Should I even audition for it? Should I decline it? That type of thing. So I can be super candid and transparent with him there. And he'll be like, the pay does suck. I'd say audition for it anyways, and we can work on negotiating the pay if you get the role. That was a very long-winded explanation of what agencies and managers do, what I have, and what you can do without them. So a lot of people do audition for things without agents and managers, but they're gonna be like music videos and like really small commercials that only pay a couple hundred bucks whereas agents submit you for commercials that pay thousands of dollars. So it's just a whole different tier. That's the answer to that. For some reason, the question I got most was, has anyone ever recognized me? Not for like commercials. A lot of times it's a cliche LA thing to be like, you look familiar, what have I seen you in type of thing, which I hate that question because it's like a, it's like a competition. It's like, oh yeah, well I've been in this. Oh yeah, well I just booked this. I don't know, I just don't like it, but I do often get recognized for taste made and I have been recognized for YouTube like maybe five or six times, not a ton of times. Taste made, I get recognized frequently at my job, which was kind of embarrassing because they'd be like, oh my gosh, you're the girl from Pretty Healthy. I love your show. And I'd be like, thank you. So you want water? <laughs> <laughs> it would just feel so weird about it. So this I thought was an interesting question. Someone asked if I did theater, so like on stage acting growing up and if it shows, and I did. I started doing theater at probably age nine. And I think a lot of theatrical actors have a hard time breaking into the film world, but also have some advantages. Advantages are they're really good at auditions because they're used to being in front of people and they're used to being put on the spot, especially if you have a cold read or something more improvisational. But think about it, for theater, you have a huge, huge auditorium and you need to make sure the person in the back row sees that you're angry or that you're so happy. And then when you are on film, you have a camera literally up this close. So someone this close can just see that you're really angry just by this alone, or can see that you're really happy just by this small little emotion alone, or can see that you are genuinely upset and disappointed in someone. Where on stage, someone would have to see that you're genuinely upset and disappointed with someone, <laughs> you know? It's so different that a lot of times actors who have only done stage acting don't know how to dial it back for being on camera. And it's a whole different art that stems from a similar place, but externally is so different. So there are advantages and disadvantages to doing theater before film. Now that I'm in the film world, I don't miss theater. I just don't miss it. I like this so much more. It feels so much more real and less like, like you can actually feel your feelings and it shows, whereas theater you have to like put on a performance a little bit more so than you do on film. Okay, this was interesting. How does pay work for commercials and TV? Do you make base pay, hourly pay? Typically how it works is you make a day rate. That day rate is usually quoted for like an eight hour session or a 12 hour session. And if you exceed eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, whatever the contract says, you take what you're making hourly divided by eight or 12, and then it's half again as much for each hour of overtime past that point. So that's the only money you are assured is that day rate or that session fee sometimes it's called. Now you have to keep in mind that typically whenever you book something, if it was booked through an agent and that agent gets either 10 or 15% of what you make, and then your manager gets 10, 15% ish of what you make for everything that you do. Now I do want to say there are so many scam agents in the world. If you have to pay an agent like straight up to be represented by them, they are a scam. Do not work with them. <laughs> agents should only make money based off commission for what they book you. That's what you get for sure. Now then if a commercial is picked up, meaning it actually gets shown on TV, there's different packages. They're usually called buyouts for what you'll get paid. And that is all negotiated based off of how long it is, where it's showing, what platforms it's showing on. So a national commercial for a year on national television, you might get 
eight, ten thousand dollars for that commercial to play for a year. But a commercial that's only played on new media, so like YouTube ads that you see, maybe for a year they'll only pay you a thousand dollar buyout for that year. Once that year is over, they can renegotiate the contract, pay you again for an additional year if they want to show it for an additional year. That's typically how that works. How it used to work is there were union commercials, union projects. And this used to be the golden standard. So obviously unions protect workers. So SAG is the Screen Actors Guild protects actors. SAG commercials typically pay off residuals. So it used to be if you booked a national commercial, instead of getting two to $10,000 buyout per year, you would get paid every single time it played anywhere. Different amounts of money for different areas, different platforms, whatever it might be. So a commercial could make you $50,000, $100,000, could make you a half a million dollars if it played during the Super Bowl. So it used to be you have to book one or two commercials a year and you are golden, you can do this full time as a living, which makes sense because you spend all day, every day auditioning and you book one audition for every 20 to 50 auditions you go on. So that's how you could be a full time actor. Now, almost nothing is union, which is very disappointing, but it's really just because being an actor is oversaturated. And for every actor that would say, no, I'm not gonna take $2,000 for this commercial, you're gonna have to pay me union fees. There's a hundred actors that are totally fine with $2,000 for that. That commercial. So it's just supply and demand. Us as actors oftentimes are so eager for work, we will take less than we're worth, which actually is kind of a pandemic in the sense that now nobody is being paid a livable wage. And I had a lot of questions asking, can no name actors make this a full-time living? And the sad truth is usually no, especially living in LA. You basically have to be a celebrity or book union work, which doesn't really happen anymore to make this a full-time job. Otherwise, even if you're working pretty steadily, you're probably making a couple thousand dollars per commercial. But then you have to remember that after after taxes, after paying out your agents, after paying out your manager, everything, you're really only taking home half of that. So it's very hard to make a steady living off acting anymore, especially commercial work or small. TV kind of works the same way where you'll have a session fee and then they will buy out that in perpetuity sometimes for a small flat buyout rate. So. Uh, that answered multiple questions at once for how payment works, what agents get paid, what managers get paid, and if you can make this a full-time living. Very few actors can do this full-time unless you're just kind of, you know, doing a lot of acting work under the table. There's a lot of really sketchy acting work out there that you can, that you can, um, self-submit for where, you know, you'll pay, be paid like a hundred bucks and you'll be doing very low quality product advertising where you'll hold, you'll just be doing like, that type of stuff. <laughs> so if you were to really, really hustle and self-submit and be okay with taking really low paying work and doing that type of thing every single day, yeah, you could probably pay rent, but you're not like making a killing. A lot of people wanted to know if I'd ever want to be a big name actor. And that's not necessarily a goal of mine. Like, would it be cool to book the lead in like the next Netflix show? Yeah, that would be so awesome. But is that my end goal? No, I think that if your end goal is to be famous or to make it big, to have a name, you're in it for the wrong reasons, you're gonna get burned out, you're gonna be disappointed. I just genuinely enjoy being on set and I genuinely enjoy the challenge of roles. And I think it's fun and like, it's so cool to be able to make money, side money. I don't see it as a main source of income at all to be, pretend to be someone I'm not. So that is just something I truly enjoy. And would it be cool, like I said, to book the lead in a feature film? Yeah. Yeah, and then would that make me a big name actor? Maybe, but is that my goal? No. So how often do you audition? Do you love every project you audition for? Now, like I said, when I first moved to LA, I was self-submitting for everything possible and I would, I would go to between two and four auditions a day, every day. I would wake up in the morning and I would try to make it all work. I'd have to call for time frames, being like, I know you want me to come in at 2 p.m but I have another audition at 2 p.m. What times are you seeing this role? And they would say, we're seeing it between 11 and three. And I'd be like, great, can I come at 11? Because I have two other auditions that day type of thing. So I would go out for anything and everything, no matter what it paid, self-submit, so many auditions all the time. Now, 
pre-COVID, I would say I would go on probably like three, four auditions a week from my agents and my managers that were a little bit higher caliber projects. Now, post-COVID, things have really slowed down. I probably have one-ish audition a week and they are usually self-tape or over Zoom, which is so interesting. I have had a lot of actor friends go ahead and move back home, wherever they're from. Even if they're like, I have one friend that works a ton very, very busy working big shows, move back home um, just because auditions are all going to be over Zoom nowadays. And then if you have a callback, you're just going to have to know you're going to have to fly to LA for that callback. And if you book it, you're going to have to fly to LA to book it. But for some people, that's worth living in a cheaper area of the country, which is super interesting. Yeah, I would say nowadays, I mean, I like I said, I don't self-submit for anything anymore and things have really slowed down. So probably one to two auditions a week, but at my peak, three to five auditions a day which I don't know how I did that. I was also in school and I was also working a night job and I was also trying to do YouTube and that was when I was doing a lot of taste made and dating Brooke who lived far away and babysitting. I don't know how I did that. I don't know how. <laughs> I guess I just didn't sleep, man. I also thought that this was an interesting question because I get asked it a lot. Was acting something you were interested in as a kid or something that your parents pushed you to do? A lot of parents push their kids to do acting because I mean, you can make a lot of money as a child, but no, my parents, <laughs> had no idea about this world at all. I come from a very athletic family. I joke and I say that I am like the odd man out. They all play tennis and bike ride together for fun. I think that sounds terrible. I would, there's nothing I would rather do less in the world. So it was me that wanted to try out for the theater in my town. And they were like, okay, I don't know even what, what I mean, I said try out because that's what they called it, audition. And they were like, you're gonna try out for that? And I was like, no mom, I'm going to audition. And I was like eight. Um, but so they were always kind of like two steps behind, but very supportive. And as my mom saw how much I loved it and that I was actually not terrible at it for a kid, I would be booking work. She was like totally willing to drive me all around to auditions, pull me out of school. I missed so much school as a kid to go to auditions. Uh, they were very supportive, but it was also kind of like a whirlwind for them because they knew nothing about this world at all. It was me pushing all the time to do it. Okay, a couple questions about being on set. Um, people wanted to know how many people are usually on set. Do you get food on set? Do you get clothes on set? How does that work? So it depends on the budget of the production. So like smaller end things like a smaller commercial, I would say there's about 10 people on set. There's like the director, the producer, the camera operator, a makeup person, a wardrobe person, an AD, a crafty person, a set dresser. Those are like kind of main things. So like that's like bare bones, but once you get to a larger production, I mean, you can see a call sheet, which is what you get before you go to set. And there will be 75 names on that call sheet, even if there's only three actors on set for the day. Um, so there'll be like 10 guys doing, I mean, like I, I probably sound stupid trying to explain what all of the crew does because that is like a totally different world from being an actor. But to me, it seems like there's 10 different guys just trying to do all of the different lights. And like, there'll be like outside the house you're filming in trying to make it look like the sun is shining in by moving all of these different huge lights all around and it's crazy how many people can be on set so i would say between i take it back seven to two 80 people on set depending on what what you're doing like the uh, Samsung commercial that I did in Korea I was the only actor and there was probably a good 55 people on set and I was the only actor it was it, it it's it's crazy. Do you get food on set? Yes, there's something called crafty. It's craft services. Typically on set, there is constantly like a snack room, which is awesome, where they will have all types of non-perishable things, all types of drinks, you know, like cookies and granola bars and fruit and that type of stuff. And then you also get meals. If you're on set for 12 hours a day, you can get three meals. A lot of times, like in the morning, they'll say call time is 8 a.m. If you want breakfast, be here by 7.30 to have breakfast before your official call time at 8 a.m. And there's whole craft services companies that are basically like a catering company that will do like a full, it's like it's like being at a wedding. They'll have like a full, huge, very nice menu for every single meal. And they'll have like food trucks that they prepare it in and set out all of these tables under tents. And you go up and you order, or it's like buffet style. And typically they're also very good about allergens, which is something that I appreciate having celiac disease to where they'll be like, what are your dietary restrictions? Great, here's all the things you can have. It's 
Crafty is one of the best parts about being on set. I love crafty. And then do you get to keep clothes from being on set? Oftentimes, no, you don't get to keep it. Usually you have a fitting about a week before you're on set. And that's where you go and you meet with the wardrobe people and they will try on like anywhere between five and 20 different outfits on you and take pictures of you in all of those outfits and then give it to the director, the producer, the client, all of those people to choose your outfits. And they'll normally have a first choice, second choice, third choice. So you get to set and they'll put you in the first choice and they'll see how it looks with like the surroundings and the set and everything like that, the lighting, making sure it looks all right. Sometimes they'll decide, you know what? Even though this was our first choice, we don't love it here. We're gonna put you in our second choice. So it's a whole different world. Normally you don't get to keep it. Sometimes you do wear your own clothes. Sometimes they'll ask like, especially jeans, jeans are so hard. They'll say, hey, do you have any like dark wash jeans and any like mom jeans you could bring? And then if you bring them and you end up wearing them on set, you'll normally normally get a stipend for using your own clothes, which is very interesting as well. Right now during COVID too, a lot of productions are not doing hair and makeup just because you'd be coming into close contact with other people. So they will ask you to come and do your own hair and makeup. But if you do your own hair and makeup as well, typically if it's a good production, they will give you a stipend for doing that as well because they're saving money. They don't have to hire out a hair and makeup person. And then you're also spending money by using your own products for that shoot. There were so many good questions. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one here, but if you end up wanting a part two of this, let me know. I can go back and answer so many more of the questions that y'all asked because there is so many good ones. I forget how weird of a world it is just because I did grow up in this world, not like fully grow up in it like, you know, a child of a celebrity, but I started auditioning for things when I was nine. So when you grow up doing it since you're nine, you forget how much people don't know from the outside and how weird it can be from the outside. So those are some things of what it's actually like to be a no-name actor in LA, what it's actually like to be on set, how to actually get auditions, how payments actually work, how we make money, how much money we make. A lot of tea was spilled today. <laughs> I love these chatty videos. They're always my favorite. So if there's any other videos similar to this you'd like to see me do in the future, comment them down below. And it would mean the world to me if you could give this video a thumbs up so that YouTube would push it out to others. And if it performs well and you enjoy it, then if it is pushed out to others, I would love to do part two. I love y'all with my whole heart. I hope you have the best rest of your day and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye.